Okay, recording has started. Yep. The red light is on. So the meeting is now called to order. Um, as for the program updates, I uh, go to Karen to report on the progress or where we are, are at with the approved contracts for Yaden Borough and Edgemont Township. So, okay, so we have both projects haven't yet started. Um, Yaden Borough has contracted or they're in the process of contracting out the work. Um, so they did approve a bid um, and they're waiting to complete that contract with the um, company. And then Edgemont Township, they had some turnover and some delays, so they are still um, working on figuring out the details of the project. So they discussed possibly phasing the project since they're going to have two different contractors doing um, the pavement and the actual construction work. Um, so that's where we're at with both of those. We're still waiting to hear about a start date, um, but they do have 18 months from the start of their contract to complete the projects. So I, I think they have until at least November of next year to finish those up. So they have plenty of time. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we have not received any emails, did you, Karen, for a public no. comment? We did post the agenda on our website, so people had the to look for the agenda. Yeah, so we, um, and I put my email up, so I didn't get any any public comments about this meeting. Yes, and then the, the Sunshine Law, we did post the meeting schedule uh, at the beginning of January last year, so that's all taken care of, too. Okay, discussion of the two low volume road applications received this fall of 2020. Yeah, First, so we have Milbourne Borough at Astor Road and Worcester Drive. Trying to go with that one first. Planning to apply. Yes. Yeah, they were planning to apply um, in spring, um, but because of COVID and a lot of other things going on, they had to delay. Um, but fortunately, they were able to get their application in this time. And their project is calling for stormwater improvements. Um, so they're actually proposing some pervious pavement along the sides of, I think, of Astor Road, which goes downhill into Worcester Drive and feeds into two um, storm, storm sewer systems. Um, so to improve water quality and decrease erosion, they're going to be making those improvements. Um, the pervious pavement will feed into perforated piping, um, which will collect that storm water and decrease the velocity of it. Um, so your typical storm water improvements there. And uh, the receiving water body is Darby Creek. So they're requesting $60,600 for their project. Um, Am I assuming that the uh, impervious area is going to also have some infiltration capabilities? Yeah, so that's where they're, if you look at their, um, I don't know, do you both have the application in front of you? If not, I can pull it up and we can look at it. Um, so they have, under the pervious pavement, they have um, stone. And then in that stone is the perforated pipe. Um, so that's where the water will go into from the road instead of all running down the road at once and overwhelming the storm drains at the bottom. But they haven't produced any infiltration testing with this yet, right? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Okay. Well, in order to have an infiltration facility, we usually have to have testing to make sure that they can actually do it. So if and that has the capacity. Right. Okay. Um, no, not that I know if they haven't done that. Um, they did work with their engineer to put this application together. Um, so here, let me, if it's all right, I'll share the site plan on my screen. Okay. You see it okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so here's the cross section of what they're proposing. So up here you have the porous pavement. We've got the stone. Um, and the, sorry, the perforated pipe. 
underneath all that. And I'm trying to see what this says. I think, um, oh, geotextile bottom and sides. So that would be lining back there. And I remember that was a common practice that they showed in the ESM training. So they would have two feet of that on either side of the road. They don't have a picture of the outlet structure, right? Um, the the new one that they'd be putting in. Where that six inch tiled drain at the bottom goes, whether there's a restriction on that or not, so infiltration can have a chance. Or... Um, six inch. Oh, down here. Right. I'm not sure. This is this is the extent of the the site plan that I have. And I mean, what there's, you, sorry. Um, that, that, asking for Beth, what she thinks. I don't know. I'm having, I'm like trying to read the, the writing and it's really hard. It is. <laughs> um, so they'd be up here. They'd be replacing the two city inlets uh, with type something, catch basins. Oh, with bicycle safe grates. Um, so they'd be replacing the inlet structures uh, as part of their project. I, I have reservations just if they take the towel drain and just tie it into that storm sewer like it looks then they have no infiltration so i don't know what the impervious paving does right yeah if it's not if there's no orifice or anything to slow that water down why do it it's going to just end up in the in the storm drain okay so down here you're saying is where they're still going to be getting the same velocity of water yeah, you, you can see the black pipes that those are the drain power, I'm assuming, and they're shown tied right into the uh, storm sewer line between the two inlets. And without any type of, uh, usually we put on under drains, we put on uh, gate valves so you can turn them off and on, but they're not even putting them into the inlets. They're putting it right into the pipe, which is unusual. So they wouldn't be able to do do drain plugs and they don't have an outlet structure with a weir or anything to um, have the water go up and over. So I think we need more information on that. OK. I, I, I guess we're within our rights to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, especially, you know, if we end up yeah, I think we can we can request more information. Um, we can offer suggestions. I don't think there's any. Um, there's nothing saying that we can't. I'm just scrolling down to the, the picture that I have. Yeah, so the water. This is all. This is uphill. It all comes down, and there's. Uh, yeah, here's the storm drain here. It's all right. I wish I had a pointer. So the storm, dra storm drain down here is on the other side of Worcester Drive. Who was the engineer that did it? Oh, uh, I don't remember the company. First name is Dennis. Dennis Leary, possibly. Don't know. Okay, if you if you can talk to Beth about the other problem we're running into with the amount of money and uh, not having enough for both projects, even if we wanted to fund them both. Okay, um, do you want me? Can I discuss Newtown Township first, and then we can? Yeah. Okay, you can do that one first. Okay. Um, okay, so Newtown Township's project is similar. Let me. I'll pull that one up. So 
So they sent us a full size site plan. So I I can probably pull that one up. Um, it might be a little difficult to see. I have it here. You want to, and okay. you don't need to pull it up because it it I can zoom in and out. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to share too, Beth. Okay, so I'm looking at their application now, and I'll share this screen instead of um, the site plan. So, Beth, if you're, well, Ed, do you have it? No, I don't plan? have it open. Okay, now. I'll just open it up then. And okay. I can zoom in and out as well. Okay. I just have it open. I don't think it's going to let me share it for some reason. I don't see it on here. You got to open it up on your computer first and then share it. So. Yeah, I, I do have it open. Ah, okay. I don't know if it's too big, if the file's too big, or what. Oh, okay. Beth, do you have it open? Mm hmm. You want me to try and share it? Yeah, try. I think I have it for everybody you can share, but there we go. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. So Newtown Township. They're having uh, similar pop problems, stormwater problems, of course. Um, they're experiencing um, erosion. They're in a more um, suburban area than Milburn. Um, so they're exper experiencing erosion along the sides of the road. It's cutting away the road and it's cutting away the lawn on either side of the roads. Um, they also have um, stormwater running off into people's yards. The pipes aren't big enough um, and they are clogging with sediment and debris. Um, let's see. So for their project, they would be replacing two cross pipes uh, with perforated pipes um, in stone. So they have a similar structure to Melbourne's. Um, so these pipes would be surrounded by stone and wrapped in geotextile fabric. Um, and these would either drain to inlet boxes um, or they would be placed in between the inlet boxes. Okay, and then where it's eroding, the township would also install the roadside stabilization with river rock where needed. So down here, you can see that uh, right in the center of the screen. Yep. So that's their proposal. Um, neither of the projects are proposing just regular pavement like our previous two. Um, so do either of you have feedback about these projects? We have not had the low volume road people look at these, right? Yeah, we came out to look at both of these sites and we have tech reports on both of them. So they were okay with them? Mm -hmm, yep. Okay. Yeah, for, for this project here, um they were looking at the whole length of the road um i made the suggestion maybe focus on the the upper part of the road before we deal with the drainage drainage issues down below because what you're going to do upstream would most likely affect downstream so if they move forward with this project they'll likely phase it um into a second part so basically, they have uh, erosion along the side of the road, mm -hmm. either from people driving on it or, or, or the water flow. I'm not sure which. Mm -hmm. And they're going to put a two foot wide section of river rock to stabilize the erosion. Correct. Yep. So it can't be a channel. I don't. So it's not a swale they're trying to stabilize. They're going to just stabilize 
the road to keep people from driving on it, I imagine. Well, I mean, like here, if I'm thinking of the right spot that that we were looking at, it's a, a road ditch. So the, the ditch is collecting water during rainstorms and washing, you know, out of, the side of the road is crumbling and washing downstream down the road. So there's road material at the bottom of the road. But why wouldn't you design a swale and stabilize a swale then? They're just going to put rock on the one side, so it's only eroding down over the embankment into the swale, and the swale's okay? Well, what they're doing instead is that those pipes, the perforated pipes, so they'll be surrounded by the stone and then wrapped in that geotextile fabric. So that's where the water will collect and then run under. Okay, but that's just for that red pipe though, right? Um, Beth, can you scroll to the left? There's that there. This way? Yeah, is there anything mm -hmm. that way? No, it's on the other side. It's down. There's more here. It's like a second part over here. Right, so the perforated pipe isn't underneath everywhere where they're putting the stone. Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then so, they, have, go ahead. they have that red arrow here on the left hand side. Remove and replace existing 39 inch linear feet of 18 inch CMP, which I don't see it. Oh, it's really, it's really light. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> it's like that gray. There's an arrow to it and it goes across it's across the um across the road, but just above where that the arrow on that comment is it shows where it shows the arrow. You have to follow the arrow and it's like it's like really light gray. No wonder you can't then. Gotcha. <laughs> but it's a yeah, I can I can barely see it. <laughs> <laughs> like if you tilt your screen the right way you can see it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I think what we're what we should probably do in the future, not that the since they've they've already been looked at by the low volume road people. I'm I'm not questioning it completely. It's just the idea that maybe we need to have photographs so we can see these things. Okay. Both, just these plans, so we can actually see what the problem looks like, because it's not like it's a a development plan. We're actually trying to correct an environmental problem, mm -hmm. and we don't have enough here. Okay. I got you. I think pictures would be nice. That would be helpful. Yeah. I agree. We're still learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, Wade came out to this site um, with me and he did provide a tech report. He said they sound like good projects, um, but he didn't take a look at the application. So, um, you know, as far as the tech report goes, that was his suggestion and his summary of the problem and what we discussed. Um, so they did include, you know, all of his suggestions here. Um, so just that's that's how that process usually works with their um, assistance. So, okay, so for, for we'll request some more clarification um, about what they're, you know, what is under those perforated, what's under the perforated pavement and how they plan to achieve that, slowing that water down, correct? Yeah, I think maybe what we'll need to do in the future, since we're not having, not necessarily a technical review, but if we could do, maybe you sit down with me and I'll, I'll do a, the, the technical review to some extent so I could have a, we can have a better understanding if we need to go back and forth with the applicant a little bit to make sure we understand their proposal to be able to explain it to Beth and Ron and, you know, then get a better understanding so we know exactly what environmental benefit is and what highway benefit we're talking about. Right mm -hmm. And then the other thing that we need to do for these two is the fact that they're both 
in the ballpark of sixty thousand dollars, right? Yes. Yep. So one is for sixty thousand six hundred dollars. The other one is for sixty four thousand three hundred seventy two dollars. So available right now uh, with both of our allocations for the nineteen twenty fiscal year and the twenty twenty one fiscal year, uh, we have uncommitted about one hundred and nineteen thousand dollars available until our next allocation is approved, which wouldn't be until July 2021. So, you know, in the event that both of these projects were amazing and we said let's fund both of them, one, we wouldn't be able to fully fund both of them, and two, um, we would need to consider whether either of these projects or the previously contracted awards um, it, if they request more money, you know, do we want to leave any in our account available for that if they request more money? So, so Beth, have you ever been involved? One of the things that, uh, who was it? Was it not Wayne from the Dirt and Gravel Road people or Center? About oh, the Wade. Excuse me? Wade. 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 Wade suggested that the contracts that we currently have they can request additional funding above and beyond what we have if they run into problems. Have you run into a lot of that in Chester County? Um, I don't know that we've run into a lot of it, but if we did, it wouldn't have been a problem because we've never come into the situation where we had more applications than funds by a long shot. So I don't know. I mean, certainly with, with our projects with Equip, we run into that all the time. You know, we have we build in 25 percent contingency contingency to our um, engineering estimates for that reason. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem far fetched. I'm I can't remember ever having to do that for any projects in Chester County. But if we did it, it wouldn't have been an issue because we weren't we weren't spending all the money. So it would have still been <clears throat> where here you could be spending all your money. And then if one of these projects that you awarded before came back and asked for more funds, you wouldn't have it. To, you wouldn't have anything in reserve. Except they said that we can use the money in July that we get. Mm -hmm. Or like a, an additional award. Right. Yeah. So in, in other words, we'd be risking, what was it we figured? According to the contract, it would be like $8,000 for the two existing projects the front up front and then the other two we, i didn't figure those because they're probably not going to start and re be required till after july right but we could figure that out too and see if the board would willing to take that risk and front the money up front if we needed to use it and then be able to get reimbursed in july and then we'll just have that much of a head start on the next <laughs> money but it's it all comes down to the two projects whether they're uh, worth funding both or they both need improvement. Uh, I'm kind of thinking that we need to probably meet with the, both uh, applicants, get some answers to the questions that we have, and then see if there's any negotiating room whether they'd be willing to come down. So at least we were down within the budget, and then we we'd have the option then to fund. Uh, approve them both. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, I agree. I think we need a little more clarification from both of them. Um, as far as the program policies go, they're, they are within the program policies. I don't, you know, I didn't see anything in there that's not allowed per the low volume road um, admin manual. Um, but as far as effectiveness and environmental improvements and road improvements, I think there's definitely some more clarification that we could get. So I think setting up a meeting um, with both of them to get that clarification. And then I can say, you know, we received two, two applications, tell them, you know, how much we have available and how much do 
how much we want to make sure that we have left over in case anyone requests more funds. So do we want to do that? Do we want to have money left over? Or if they request more funds from us, the Yaden and Edgemont, and possibly one of these two, do we say, you know, no, you know, what you were awarded is what we can give you? Because that's an option too. We don't have to give them the additional 20% if they request it. Right. So yeah, so we need to get a board approval. If we if we got to negotiate with them and got approval for them to um, come in under what we have available. Mm -hmm. In other words, they, one takes off $2,500 and the other one takes off $2,500 from what their request is. And we're in the ballpark of being able to have what our available funding is. We just don't have any of the contingency for that. What was it, 2%? Oh. So they can request up to 20%. 20%, so that's where it came out to eight. So we need to figure out what that number is before mm -hmm. all of them and go to the board today and see if they'd be willing to risk that. And then we can vote on it in December. Okay. But these projects are both worthwhile. In the meantime, I think to get Ron and Beth together and we'll have the photographs and stuff for the next meeting on what the projects look like, get clarification on how the infiltration will work better on the Milbourne site and get some idea of the goal, the environmental goal of the um, new town site to make sure that we have an environmental benefit there, the stabilization, how bad is it, we can see it and stuff. Okay. We probably should have also have a narrative. They should have a narrative project, you know, description about what the I goal know, is. I, um, I mean, I, I put together a brief one based on the site plan that they gave me, but the, um, the low volume road application is just that one page. Mm -hmm. It's required, so uh, a narrative would be very helpful. I wonder if we can require that in our local policies. That's a good I was point. Also thinking that, you know, what you're talking about doing it is is a, is a fine way to handle it. You know, it, it, if you if the board decides they don't want to take that risk, I don't think that hurts the program at all, because then I think it might not that it's going to one instance of not funding everybody is going to change anything, but Maybe it'll motivate applicants to be more thorough and to try and be more competitive if we're only able to fund one at a time. Um, you know, it's. I don't know that it would be a huge handicap if they. If only one was funded and somebody else had to wait until the next round of funds came in or whatever. You know, you can I mean, that's why we, you have a ranking system for that. So. You know, you might get better proposals over time if you do it that way. I, I guess the the dirt and gravel road people scared me with that idea that if you you don't you know, like in Chester County, you're not getting enough applications sometimes. Mm -hmm. If you don't spend the money, you don't get any more. So, right. And this is our first time, but I'd like to get the money spent down before they tell me, oh, you didn't spend it. That's that's the kind of thing that's in the back of my mind. That do you have is it two years? Do you have what? How much time do you have to spend the the, the money that we have left? The hundred and nineteen thousand. How how much time do you have? So we have until okay. Let me think about this. We have until I I believe June of twenty twenty one to spend our first allocation, which was eighty four thousand um, dollars, and then we would have until June twenty twenty two to spend that other eighty some thousand dollars. But we are expecting another allocation in July of 2021. So say, you know, say we we do award both of these projects and we have no uncommitted balance remaining. Everything's committed to these four projects. Um, we just wouldn't accept any applications in spring. Fall, we should be able to accept more. I mean, I think whatever However, the board decides to do it, I think is. I don't think. Either way to handle it is objectionable in any way. It's just where do you want to go with it? You know, and mm -hmm. I, I know that in Chester County. They've had. That money seems to always, you know. It always seems like there's money there that's not spent, but it's not going to expire. And usually they spend it. I don't know that they've ever sent money back, but. Um, it seems like there's a long time to spend it is what my observation is so yeah i think the other problem that i'm working to my back of my mind being worried is that 
if we we don't have a lot of money, seventy thousand. You can see these projects are coming in at sixty. I'm thinking in the future, so we don't disappoint a lot of people and get a lot of people agitated, that we're going to have to put in our in our notice of uh, money, what how much is available, mm -hmm. so they don't come in with sixty thousand dollar projects if we only have twenty thousand dollar left. Because right. yeah. that's that's going to be the other problem. The other problem is. Eighty thousand dollars is sounds like a lot of money until you start talking about these type uh, of projects. And it's not <laughs> yeah. another another option. There's there's a ton of options, but mm -hmm. another thing we could do is select one of these projects for award this round, and then encourage whoever you know we we decline to apply in spring. So that way, it gives us that time for Yaden and Edgemont and potentially whichever project we choose here to request additional money. Yep. And then if we and then, you know, we can say we have this much available. Are you are you able to scale your project down? So that's another option. I think the, the, the goal would be like Beth said, is the idea of having a lot of projects where we can say no to people. Um, you know, it's just a, a thing when you're talking about you're talking about millions like an equip program <laughs> it's a little yeah. better they're, they're, they're worth the gamble here we're talking about eighty thousand dollars is it worth the gamble to submit it if you know if we turn everybody down all the time so we yeah we'll have to figure that one out there, eventually we that would be ideal to have competitive you know competition for them mm -hmm. for money but if they're having to put in it they have to put in that training and they have to put forth their plan and then if they don't get funded in the fall and they're going to wait till the spring and they're putting off those improvements so I can see kind of being worried about disenchanting people and them just saying, you know, they're not, they don't want to participate anymore. You know, I can see that. Okay. I mean, lots of things can happen. It's so new. It's hard to tell what's, what's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, let's get all the options available. So we're going to propose the board today, trying to get what the board, the feeling on how they would want to approve with the risking the money up front. So the, the, EQB board will know that that's an option. They can fund both of them or they can't fund both of them and they have to pick one. Okay, so so before we get to the district board meeting, just so I have an idea of what my next steps are, I'll reach out to each of these um, municipalities and I'll say, you know, we have two applications that exceed our available funds. Um, you know, in order to help us make a better decision, we, we would like to request more information. I'll send them each the grant evaluation form for them to fill out. Um, and then I can just go out and take pictures at the site um, and where they're proposing each of the improvements. Um, and then I can come up with something more detailed. Um, I'll, I'll request to meet up with them too, and I can jot down notes. Yeah, just to uh, yeah I would say go out and take pictures of the site and um, then come back and let me look over the things and make sure we have a technically effective application. Because okay. I don't, yeah, you were there with Wade, so you can fill me in on what Wade had said about it or whoever that was with you. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that they've met what Wade was thinking was going to be, and then and see if we can get them to approve the design a little bit and okay. get some questions answered, and then we'll be in a little better shape to make a decision. Okay. And then you can negotiate them with see if they can take the money down. That's another step. Okay. So as far as that goes, we'll see how the board feels about how to handle our available funds. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Oh, good. Yeah, we have um, we have lots of options for how to do that. So I will rack my brain and come up with all the ones that we discussed. Very good. So, what did I do? This. So, we're not ready to make a recommendation um, this meeting, um, but we did discuss the funds and how we're going to present everything to the board. So, we'll do that. Um, so, no motion is needed um, for the recommendations. So, uh, unless there's anything else either of you have to add, I guess we'll, adjour we'll adjourn. Sound good? Very good. All right. All right. See you in a little bit. Okay. okay. Thanks, Thank Beth. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.